I have a, a friend who, um, when I've introduced this uh, friend, I've always said this sort of thing because most of you say you are not prejudiced people. And you, if I say I have a friend, you'd say I'd like to meet them, compared to your friend. And you could handle any friend I could lay on you, in terms of weirdness. Well, um, my friend Emmanuel hasn't got a body. See? And a lot of people say, well, I don't know about that. You know, I mean, see, well, he's my friend. I mean, it's not your problem, but I don't know whether you have imaginary playmates, but I do. I have lots of them. They enrich my life immensely. And Emmanuel has a great sense of humor. He's absolutely delightful. Uh, you remember the, when I asked Emmanuel, I say, Emmanuel, I work with people that are dying. What should I tell them? He said, tell them it's absolutely safe. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't love somebody like that? He said, it's like taking off a tight shoe. Dying is like taking off a tight shoe. Because where he's looking, he did it already, and he's sitting around, you know, he knows. And he's saying, what are you making such a big deal out of the, the body? It's just an incarnation, no big deal. Well, what happened was that I had gotten, throughout those years, I was busy sort of putting down my physical body and my personality. I was so neurotic, and my body was not quite what I wanted it to be, and I just figured, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to get high. And then at one point I said to Emmanuel, Emmanuel, what is my work? What should I be doing on earth? And he said, Ramdas, why don't you, you're in a school, why don't you try taking the curriculum? He said, why don't you try being human? You know, I'd never thought of that. Because as far as I was concerned, my job was to push away my humanity and to get high. And I'd get high in any way I knew, and then I'd see it all, and I'd be wise and far out. And then I'd go back to my room, and I'd come back into my humanity. And I'd yick. And so I realized that until... that, that I didn't take an incarnation by error. In fact, there are no errors in the game at all. Not any errors in form at all. All form is lawful. It's all lawful. There's no errors. And what's far out is as long as you identify with that part of you that is in form, you are merely a lawful happening. You can talk free will, but it's nonsense. That's not free will. That's all lawful unfolding. When you decided to come here tonight, that, didn't, that thought didn't just come out of the void. It comes out of this, which led to this, which led to that, which led to that. All your thoughts, your body, this is a 1931 model that is decaying in a perfectly lawful and orderly fashion. And as long as... I identify with all of this, I am merely lawfully unfolding. And Emmanuel said to me, you have your choice, do you want to be the victim or the creator? Because as long as you are the incarnation only, only, you are the victim. You are being had by the law. And you feel yourself caught in stuff that's just happening to you. You didn't ask for it. If you think you are the form. Ah, but if you flip into these other levels of consciousness outside of form and met yourself behind form, which isn't describable, you can't say I am a that because that's a form. It's very frustrating because you can point at it, but you can't describe it because every description isn't what it is. But as you begin to acknowledge that part of you that is not in form, and even to rest in it, you begin to experience what it feels like to be that which created yourself.